So in this video we're going to be talking about Luminar Neo version 1.1. In the most recent update of this Ukrainian-based photo editing software, we've got some functions that bring it even closer to Photoshop. Mainly some bugs were addressed, the layers function was totally improved, and now we've got a portrait background removal tool that is really cool. Let me show you. Yeah, yeah, Manry, and this channel I help with the tech tools to be creative. And Luminar Neo is not a new topic on the channel, you can check out this playlist over here for other videos about it. But if you have never used it, you can check the description box below where you're gonna find the link to get one week for free, or also to get a subscription or a one-time payment for the software so that you can edit your images using artificial intelligence. Let me show you the updates here on the computer. Okay, so here we are already inside Luminar Neo and I've already favorited some of the images that we're gonna use today. And two of them, these two over here, come already with the software. They're already examples they give you. But I've added also two more that pose different challenges to the software. I wanna see how far it can go. So let's start with this one over here. I'm just gonna double click it. We're gonna see it here now in full screen. You're gonna enter the edit mode by clicking up here on the right. And now the moment you open a picture on the edit page of Luminar, you already see the layers part here on the left. And one of the updates is that now you can add a raw image as a layer. So let's say for example, I'm just going to go over here to plus and these are things that come already with the software and these are other ones that I've added myself. And one that I wanna add is this one over here, which is a raw drone image. And the moment you insert it, you come up with 50% opacity and you can also choose some other ways of stretching, fitting or filling the screen with this new image. So let's say for example, we just want to fill the whole screen with it. We're just gonna click fill here and it's going to make the image a little bit larger so that it fills all the gaps in the sides. You could also come back here to fit and go to stretch, but then the proportion is just going to be off. So I'm just gonna choose fill and have it perfectly centered. Now you probably understood already why I chose this picture and how they fit perfectly together. But one thing is that I haven't edited this picture yet. So what I can do here is that I can just bump up the opacity to 100% so that I can see this image perfectly. And now I can simply develop both images separately. Right now I have here this layer selected as you can see the blue square around it. So I'm just gonna come up here to enhance. I'm not really going to edit it. I'm just going to use AI to make this image pop a little bit more. Just gonna pop it 100% here. Let's see the before and after. Luminar already does a very good job. So I'm just gonna leave it at that because today is not a proper editing tutorial. But if you wanna see a picture being edited from zero to here, you can check out this video over here in which I show you every single step that I do to transform one picture from this to this. Back to today's video. Okay, so now that it's edited, I can just reduce the opacity back again to 50%. And as you can see, we can have these two pictures merged perfectly together like this. And you can also move them around totally independently. So you just have to select it there on the left, whatever you wanna do. And you can also redimension these as you please. So you can just do whatever you want. You can flip them horizontally, vertically, the way that you prefer and mess around with the opacity. So this is the layers update. Really, really good to know that Luminar included also working with raw files over here and it saves a bunch of time. So now you don't have to import one picture, edit, export, and then re-import as a layer on Luminar so that you can use it here. By the way, in the layer properties also, you have this box over here in which you can choose different kinds of composition methods. So actually, if you wanted just to make it, for example, light and, and show only the brightest parts of the other picture, you can have also another kind of mixing these two pictures, which actually looks pretty cool in this one. I'm just gonna leave it as it is right now. So perfect. That was one of the updates. Okay, let's go back here. I'm just going to reset this one to the original. Perfect. Let's go in again into edit. And now I'm gonna go to layer properties. And this is what I wanna show you about the background removal tool. And here we're just gonna go up to masking. And now we have this new portrait background function. I'm just gonna click on it. And when we click remove, it's just going to take everything away. And as you can see, it tried to detect the edges as well as possible all around here. And the only part that you can really notice that there's something strange going on is this one over here, but we still have control over the mask. So we can still come over to refinements brush and we can see by clicking there that we have transition object and background. So these three masks here, we're gonna be able to edit. Object is going to be everything that is here in this pastel beige color. If you click transition, you're gonna see everything that is in this transparent mode here. 
which is the transition property between object and background. You can make it smaller or you can make it bigger, which is some sort of way Luminar Neo is adopting the feathering in the selection. And background is going to be everything that is in blue. And you can see by the color of the button here. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm just going to add the transition mask into that part over there. So I'm just going to reduce the size a little bit more and I'm going to zoom in to 300%, pressing space. I'm just going to move the image around and now I'm just going to paint this part over here to cancel it. And that's it. Let's just leave some of the hair over there flying like this. Perfect. I'm just going to go back to fit to screen, portrait background, and that's it. So now if you add any kind of layer on the back of this image, it should be perfectly transparent. So let's just add the same one that we were using before. So that's it. I'm just going to make it fill the screen as it was before and opacity 100%. But now I can just come over here and I can reorder the layers. So I can just pull this, bring it down and boom. Now we can see the image on top of that background perfectly cut out. Even some of the hair did quite a good job over here by feathering the corners. So I'm actually quite, quite impressed with how it selected this image really, really well. So let's see some examples that are a little bit more challenging to Luminar. Back to the catalog. Actually, this one here is one that I've tried before and it seemed like it was very, very easy. But as you can see, white shirt and white background mix quite a lot. So it's not that simple for the software to understand what it has to cut out. But still, if you come over here, masking, portrait background, remove. Let's see what Luminar does. And you're going to see that it looks perfect, except for just one region, which is exactly here in the middle of the arms, that you can see that this part wasn't selected that well. So we can go here to the refinements brush, and now you can see perfectly that it didn't select here very well. We, we can just grab the background brush, and we can make it a little bit bigger, and just paint it over here like this. And now we can grab the transition one and just go over here so that it can detect the edges perfectly. So I'm just gonna go over here like this. Okay, all right. So now let's go back and see how it looks. Okay, already looks much, much better. Let's go out a little bit. And I'm going to do the same as before. I'm just going to add this image here on the back with full opacity. Let's see how it looks, feel. Yeah, so we still have to be a little bit more careful about the edges over here, but in general, it did 90% of the job. So in some cases like this, you're going to have to go in and go more detailed with the brush. But anyways, it's something that you can do already inside Luminar. You don't need another third party software to go there, do it and then come back. Okay, so now I got two extra examples for you. The first one is this one, in which I really wanted to see if Luminar was going to be able to eliminate the background, but not the hair flying over here. So let's just go to masking, portrait background, remove, and let's see what it does. So as you can see, it did a very good job with this hair over here. It missed one that was flying over there, but still it wasn't a flat selection around the hardest edges over here. So overall, very good job. And the last one is this one of me walking on a beach in which you have many different kinds of objects and same kinds of colors and tonalities here on the leg or on the shorts. So let's see what it does. Layer properties, masking, portrait background, remove. And very, very good job. And this takes us to one of the other updates that Luminar has done before, but that still I'm not very comfortable about talking about because it still has some bugs. So I'm still waiting for them to do some updates on it. But I can show you already here for us to be excited about the next videos that are coming up, which is this here in which I go to masking and then you have mask AI. So now Luminar is trying to detect everything in the scene and understand what it is. So it tries to understand what is the subject and also what is human, what is water, mountains, natural ground, man-made ground, all of these. So if you select things separately, like for example, human, it's going to try to understand what, what is the human in this image. And I imagine that this is the same algorithm running in the background to try to understand what's the subject of this image. But you can also choose things like, for example, water. 
And as soon as you do it, it selects quite well only the water in the scene and not the rest. There is, of course, some shadowing of masking over here and over here, but still it's a very good first mask. And then as you saw, there are other things like, for example, man-made constructions that work sometimes, sometimes not. It feels like it's still in a development stage. And that's it for this update. Luminary is really going into this direction of adding artificial intelligence and functions that make the software work perfectly as a standalone software. You don't need other things to edit stuff, so you won't need Photoshop or GIMP or any other kind of software to do some basic work with layers or compositing or anything like that. Of course, it's still limited if you had all of these softwares that are specialized in its own area, but still feels like a very good deal if you want to have one software that does a little bit of everything. All right, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments or questions about Luminar Neo, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to watch something else that is interesting, YouTube tailored this option here especially for you. So I'll see you over there. Ta-ta!